If you're looking to relocate here to sunny South Florida and you got your eyes set on Fort Lauderdale Beach, then you're gonna wanna stick around because in this video, I'm gonna go over the cost of living. My name is Paul Blasco and I'm a realtor here in the South Florida area. And if you're brand new to the channel, please hit like, subscribe, and the notification bell so you can see all the content that I'm putting out. If you wanna get in touch with me, my phone number is gonna be right here on the screen. You can call me or text me anytime. If you wanna book a call directly on my calendar, use the link in the description below. All right, so let's get right into the video. The first thing we're gonna go over is the average home price here and the utility cost. Now, Fort Lauderdale is 61% higher than the national average when it comes to home prices. The median sale price in Fort Lauderdale is $920,000 for a single family home, while the average sale price is $1.56 million. With the high home prices also comes a very high utility cost, so let's go over the electric costs. Now, on average in Fort Lauderdale, you're gonna be paying about 19 cents per kilowatt hour. Now this may be drastically reduced from places like California that have 30 and 40 kilowatt cents per hour. Not everywhere in the United States has a low cost of electricity. In an average size home around 2,000 to 2,500 square feet, you can expect a utility bill if you have three or four people living in your home to be around five to $600. Now this may be shocked to some people. And like I said, people from California, you might be extremely relieved at these prices because they're three to four times lower than you are. You just need to be aware of the electricity electricity cost if you're used to Florida is a little high in Fort Lauderdale. All right, the next thing we're gonna go over is going to be the groceries and shopping here in Fort Lauderdale. Now, I'm just gonna go over a few of the different everyday items that people buy from grocery stores, and this is gonna be prices that I got from Publix and that are kind of an average between Publix and Walmart, but you're gonna get to know and love Publix if you do decide to move down here, so let's get right into the prices. Now, a loaf of bread is about $4.61. A gallon of milk recently, it's been a little bit pricey, year, it's about $5.49. Now eggs, depending on where you get them, if we go off of Publix, we're going to be at about $3.94. Now for a pound of beef, if it's not on sale, you're looking at $12.06. And for cereal, you're looking at about $6. And I use like a cinnamon toast crunch, for example, as a basic cereal. Now prices for groceries usually fluctuate and it really depends on where you shop. Like I said, I'm using Publix for an example, but if you shop at Walmart or Aldi's or any of the other grocery stores, in the Fort Lauderdale area, you might experience different pricing, but this is on average where you're usually gonna go is a Publix because it's easily walkable. All right, now we're gonna go over insurance and this covers flood insurance and homeowners insurance. Now, flood insurance, you don't need for everywhere in Florida, but there are a few neighborhoods specifically in Fort Lauderdale that are prone to flooding. Now, flood insurance is separate from your homeowner's insurance, and that's always gonna come at a higher cost. You don't necessarily need it, but if you're in the downtown area or the surrounding areas of downtown, it would be advised as you carry it. I'm gonna put a link below in the description to some of the flood zones here, so if you wanna do a little bit of research for yourself, I would highly suggest that you do that. Now, homeowner's insurance in Fort Lauderdale can get a little high and there's a lot of carriers that are starting to drop off because of the age of the roof and the cost of insuring some of these homes. Now the age of your roof also when you decide to buy a home could greatly affect your ability to get homeowners insurance or even a fair rate. There's even been cases that I've seen in some recent deals that they were unable to even get insured because the roof needed to be replaced and some of the conditions for homeowners insurance is requiring that the roof be replaced before you even buy the home. I have seen some prices for insurance around homes that are $350,000 that are about $6,000 a year, which is very high for South Florida. This new high though is kind of becoming the norm with the prices in South Florida for insurance skyrocketing in recent months. Another part of insurance is gonna be the car insurance here in South Florida. Now car insurance premiums do get a little bit high because there are so many claims and so many accidents due to the drivers here. On average, a car insurance bill can be around two to $300 for full coverage, depending on what type of car you have. Me Personally, my insurance is about $200 for full coverage. So if you want to move to South Florida, you should definitely reach out to your insurance provider and see what the rates would be if you decide to move so you could price out accordingly. But just for reference, the South Florida area does tend to give you higher insurance rates. All right, next thing we're going to talk about is the HOA fees here in South Florida and specifically the Fort Lauderdale area. Now, Florida does have very high HOA fees and a lot of this is due to the Surfside collapse that happened in my 
Miami, which I touched on in another video. If you want to hit it right here, you can see the condo fee video that I made a few weeks back. Now I have seen HOA fees in Fort Lauderdale higher than a thousand dollars a month. If you aren't used to HOA fees, you might want to look in an area that doesn't have HOA fees and I would be more than happy to help you find one. And there definitely are some available, but some of the more nicer neighborhoods and nicer buildings definitely have high HOAs. Now the reason the HOA fees are high and I'll touch on it briefly is because of the assessments and the lack of funding in the HOA's account. Now most people vote no when they go to HOA increases and this leads to a lack of reserves which in turn is making HOA fees higher now because the laws are changing and they're requiring people to hold a hundred percent reserves. This is something that you're going to want to pay attention to because moving down in the downtown area there's a lot of condos and those condo HOA fees could start to creep up in the next few years as the laws are changing in 2025. But on average, I really see an HOA fee of about three to $500. It's really the typical range. All right, the next thing we're gonna go over is the toll roads in the parking in Fort Lauderdale. Now this is gonna be definitely at a cost to you. And if you're not used to paying for parking and you wanna live down here, you're gonna have to get used to it. Now the turnpike, if you use it for work, you're gonna be going north and south and that is a paid toll road. Although it may not be a huge cost, if you're spending six or $7 a day commuting from work and you add that up over the course of a year, you really start to get a number that you just can't ignore. Now, while there is no paid tolls on 95, there are express lanes that you could pay that they're adding and they're starting to expand them a lot more north and a lot more south and those are paid. So you could run into some tolls even on the unpaid highways. Now, if you work downtown, almost all of the parking garages and the street parking is metered parking or hourly parking. You're most likely gonna find yourself parking in a parking garage paying hourly and this could add up if you drive your car around a lot or you're working from home or you're working at an office you're really going to start to rack up bills for parking now this cost really could start to rise up i mean if you don't care then it really doesn't matter to you but if you do care you're going to want to pay attention to where you park what the rate is and how often you're really parking versus you know taking an uber or just walking to work depending on where you live i would suggest if you live in fort lauderdale and you can work remote you should probably work remote just to save the money on parking now this is the same if you go to the beach in Fort Lauderdale, you're still gonna have to park anywhere. There's virtually no free parking in a Fort Lauderdale area, and you're really gonna have to pay anywhere you go. Even most of the restaurants that you're gonna go to are not really gonna have free parking. Most of them in the Las Olas area are gonna be valet, and obviously that comes at a cost. If you got any value from this video or you enjoyed the content I put out, please hit like, subscribe, and the notification bell as it shows me you really enjoy what I'm putting out to you. As always, if there's anything I can do, my phone number is gonna be right here on the screen. You can call me or text me anytime. I would love to speak with you about anything real estate related. If you haven't seen my last video on Fort Lauderdale, hit this button right here. It's going to take you to the five things that you need to know about Fort Lauderdale, or you can hit this playlist to let you know everything that you need to know about South Florida.